All right. <clears throat> Hello, for everybody. Massive, for that massive throat clear, Clay. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like you how you, I like how you unmuted <laughs> after my uh, massive throat clear and started clicking around during the intro uh, video still, but that's all okay. right. You guys should uh, you guys <clears throat> should hear us when we're we're in pre-production, ready to go live. We we literally do the Anchorman uh, the Anchorman vocal warm-ups. The Human Torch was denied a denied bank a loan. Bank loan. <laughs> the arsonist has oddly shaped feet. <laughs> so it is another round of Sevo main playoffs tonight, guys. We have uh, Arctic Gaming vs. Infinity Project coming up, and then Complexity vs. I by Power right after that. Okay, so somebody says I saw that. Is terrible. What happened? Really? Well, actually, most of the most of the viewers are saying that you're too loud. Huh. Can you set it back to the settings you had yesterday? I did. Let me do it. Yeah, here. Yeah, it's apparently it's you. All but right. Okay. Any better people? We'll go with that. <laughs> Clops is awful. How oh, this is this chat's gonna make me cry. Yeah, well, that's never the way you want to start off. We've got a <laughs> bunch of good matches tonight. Clay will figure out his technical difficulties. I can only hear clops from my right ear. That's very strange. We need a consensus here. Am I too quiet? Is he too loud? We know. Oh, fixed. Apparently somebody says fixed. Okay, people are saying fixed now. I'm hoping it's correct. About the right ear speaker, I have no idea what that's about. Too low, too soft. God, man. <laughs> We had this fixed yesterday. This is terrible. All right, here we go. Uh, so, well, at least you make up for it with your devastating good looks. Just pose oh, for the camera, you. and maybe I'll just talk the entire time, and everyone <laughs> will just be fascinated with your hair. I always stare at Clay's hair. It's like the perfect Jay Cutler hair. Those of you who are American and understand that reference, look at the Chicago Bears quarterback, Jay Cutler. He has perfect hair all the time, and so does Clay. How I'm always now? impressed by it. Too loud, too quiet, just perfect. Okay. Well, uh, just keep giving us your feedback. We know that you're on a delay. I'll talk about what's actually relevant. We've got a couple matches lined up tonight. It's the SIBO Season 3 main playoff matches. We have Arctic versus Infinity Project coming up now. Uh, well, Arctic and Infinity Project are coming up now, like right now. And I know a lot of people have been... Uh, uh, asking about what is central standard time i have no i have some serious difficulties uh understanding the time zones at nine central at 10 eastern right or seven pacific will be the i buy power versus complexity match right yes right, right. yes okay all right so we got Sorry, that i'm messing with sightings over here hopefully uh we'll be good now why do you have to go and get a new mic you ruined everything we had it dialed in I need to. I need to sound as good as you. I, it made me self-conscious. Our entire staff has these uh, Blue Yeti professional mics. I'm the only one still using this headset here, and I, I was like, okay, I can't do that anymore. Like, no way am I going to do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll just have to talk a little louder, I guess. People are saying it's still a little soft, so maybe I just need to start screaming at the microphone. Yeah, well, I've always encouraged you to do that because you were always a little bit too reserved anyway, so why not just pick up that habit, start yelling all the time. Everybody's saying the sound <laughs> is relatively thick, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Um, okay. All right, so they're going to use a custom server, and we have the GoTV IP right here, and since we're not using a SIBO-hosted server, we have to be prepared for the fact that the map might change before it ends. I know, I know everybody hates that, but it's not our, it's not under our control. These players in season three are, are allowed to use non-regulation servers. So if that's the case and we were 16, 13 and, and or excuse me, 15, 13, and then the map suddenly changes, we're just going to be all be sad together and we all have to just suck it up. Okay. Yes. So that is the correct IP you just gave me. Um, yeah, it should be. I'm going to go test it out right now. You just, uh, you do your thing and strike a pose. Maybe it's your pop filter, Clay. Maybe it's just like blowing up your sound or not blowing up your sound. Or like someone away said, maybe sound. I'm perfect and you're just too loud. I've heard multiple people <laughs> say that my sound is perfect and that maybe yours... Maybe just scoot that mic just a little bit back there, buddy. Me? Yeah. All right. 
pay. <laughs> So we got a couple of good ones. You know, one thing that I wanted to uh, t- touch on before we get started is that the the big marquee matchup of the night uh, is is obviously Arctic versus <laughs> high by power versus uh, complexity. And uh, Arctic uh, versus infinity is going to be a good one too. So. It's it is going to be good. It's a, it's a lower. Uh, no, excuse me. It's not. Is it a lower? Yes, it is yes, a lower bracket lower match. Bracket. But it's probably the best of the lower bracket matches. Uh, the one that the thing that I wanted to get to was the fact that we may not actually see everything in the I by power and Cole Arsenal. Not only is this not the grand finals for SIVO, they also have another land tournament to attend this upcoming weekend. For So they've, they've got two sets of strat they need to deploy and tonight may not be the time to throw everything. Maybe maybe they'll go with a couple of looks that they've shown each other before. Maybe mm-hmm. they've played each other on nuke and they've shown some strats and they'll just try to, they'll just try to make some shots. But I doubt we're gonna see the, the amazing set piece or that timed sight take that we'll be looking for on LAN or in the SIBO Grand Finals, for example. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure we'll see some uh, typical uh, things that we've seen them do before. Uh, but yeah, nothing new if they have anything in the works. And uh, but yeah, I'm certain they have something in the works, man. They've they <laughs> like this is one of their major events. They've got to win this one. And if nothing else, it's got to be for bragging rights because you are the you are the two. Like, you're the two huge gorillas in the room, right? You've got to you've got to be the alpha dog, right? Absolutely. Okay, so. We've what's, got. Uh, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, what's the status on that on that uh, server? Do we have people? Uh, well, the Go TV's up, but I'm on a delay, so I have no idea who's in it, who's not. I'm gonna have to wait about a minute and a half to it's gonna actually. Happen keep... where, uh, like last night, when all of a sudden ten people just joined the server and started yep. going live. That's exactly it. So those of you who have been uh, who have been with us regularly, thank you for joining us regularly. Those of you who are new to the channel, follow us. It would help greatly help our cause, and we always want to be building this channel so you can have a, a marked destination for esports. I'd like to also mention that uh, for those of you who've been asking, season four placement tournament that's coming up right around the end of the playoffs. Look for that announcement. I know I, see, I get a lot of PMs about when's that happening. I don't want to play an open. I don't want to miss that date. Yeah, I don't want to play an open either. So. Uh, We'll give that announcement on air, and we'll also do an announcement on SIBO.com, which is also having some serious renovations done to it all the time. Check out SIBO.com. The watch page, the events page is being renovated now. A lot of the content and VODs are being put up there. Uh, that's pretty cool. And the other announcement that we had, of course, is the season, season 4 sign-up. So if you're not going to be part of that placement and you just want to get your team into Season 4, that also will show up around the same time as the placement tournament. You will also have an announcement for that coming up at the end. Uh, in Season 4, we've already announced a couple of new toys coming. Uh, we'll, we'll be actually articulating what those are, and we're going to be having a new league, the Sibo P Professional League, uh, at the upper upper crust, right, the upper echelon for the teams. And we are we're pretty, pretty excited about that because of the repercussions of, uh, of what, it will ha- what will happen to our stream. Uh, in terms of the the visibility and popularity of our league, so we're we're all bracing for a, a big metamorphosis in the in the next season, I think. Yeah, and if not by next season, definitely by uh, season five. I think we should have some good stuff going on. Let's see. This. Play. I got a ready. Ah, Eight yeah. people. Go. <laughs> <laughs> like, what okay. do you want me to do? I, I can't control. Okay, it. sure. We're connecting now. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to do a uh, quick 30-second commercial while I connect to the server. So we will be right back, and we'll be in-game. So stick around. And also, if uh, you guys are the, on the stream and watching and have an ad blocker running, we would appreciate it if you uh, turned it off because these commercials do directly support Sevo and the stream. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be right back. That should be it. We are in the server, guys. And it looks like we got eight people. Like, there are nine people now. So uh, just waiting on one more member. 
from uh, Infinity Project, looks like. We were kind from of, uh, Gaming on time, huh? We were, we were kind of rushing our pregame show. We never got to show the brackets. So if anybody's curious, go to SIVA.com, the events pages, and go to find the, the brackets yourself. But we'll give you a little bit of an update. This is the lower bracket, right? So anybody who loses today in between these two teams, Arctic and Infinity Project, is going home. What you should know about these teams is that Arctic has an ongoing theme. They, they shoot extremely well, and you know superlatives can be given to them about how well they play. But the common theme is that they play, and then there's a complaint about their pings. That seems to be everybody's story with Arctic. Yeah, it is everyone's story, and I think that's because uh, <laughs> they end up being a pretty good team, and they, you know, they've been winning quite a bit. I mean, they did end up in the lower bracket, but uh, most of the season they did pretty well. I think uh, you know when you have a team with high ping, people just try to find excuses to. Uh, to come up with for losing to them. Yeah. And uh, Infinity Project is filled with people who make it extremely difficult for casters to pronounce their names. Four letters, three letters, three letters, three letters, five letters. I Perfect. want to sometimes kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Predictions, Clay, let's move on and make your prophetic announcements. By the way, everybody, Clay is batting some obscene, obscene... Uh, batting, uh, <laughs> batting average for for casting uh, matches and also calling out the final scores of, of each of these playoff games. I think he's been off by one round in like three consecutive games. So Clay, if you just want to spoil it for us, tell us the final score right now. Hmm. All right. Uh, well, let's see. I, IP is starting uh, CT side. I think uh, Arctic is probably the stronger team here, though. So, um, I think it's probably going to be a little bit closer than the uh, matches we had last night. I'm going to say Arctic Gaming is going to come out with this one probably 16-10. Hello. Did you mute yourself and you're not unmuted now? Oh, my lord. There, uh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I wouldn't vary from that prediction at all. In fact, I would uh, I would actually give the same one. That's what I felt about it. We're going live, and I got to tell you right now that this is the start of a good night. I can feel it already. Welcome to Sebo TV. Delighted to have you with us. I'm Cotton. My partner, as always, is Klops. You're watching Arctic versus Infinity Project in round four of the Sebo main playoffs. And of course, every time I do this big dramatic windup, everyone's like, oh, no, wait, not, not, not live. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, well, just kidding. When we do get to that, you guys are now well informed as to what you're watching, right? Sebo Main, Season 3, Round 4, or actually Lower Bracket Round 3. Round 4 is what you'll be seeing in the Upper Bracket, so that's actually incorrect. Yeah. What do we know about Arctic, Clay? We, we know that they're good shots. We know that they're pretty vanilla when it comes to playbook. It's mostly relying on, uh, on known, uh, known utility nade spots, making your first shots, and just uh, relying on a single op rest rifle look, right? Yeah, I think the biggest uh, asset in their favor is their aim. They uh, have really good entries, and they usually hit uh, their shots really well compared to most teams, and I think that's what propels them uh, ahead most of the time. So, And really, I mean, at a certain point, <laughs> that's kind of all you need. But, uh, you know, once you start playing the higher-level teams, then that's where strats come into play in effect there. But, yeah. yeah, sometimes we get a, we get really, really caught up in the science of Counter-Strike and trying to figure out what what sets you apart from your opponents and how do you get that winning edge sometimes it does come down to the basics and we we lose sight of that this team does the basics well and uh, and you'll see that tonight absolutely will config is being launched i think we should finally be going live now okay crossing my fingers i see i have fun so now you're watching sebo tv now this is live and it's still arctic versus infinity project it looks like Arctic will start on CT, and for the Arctic roster, PCK, Bruno de Beast, Hadrick, Casablancas, and Public Enemy, all known names, all starters on this roster. Roster, excuse me. <laughs> Infinity Project will have Toro, Do, AEQ, UKR, and Arcane. Now, see how many times I trip over those names, Clay. AEQ has a few fans in chat uh, pulling out the Razor AEQ. Oh, well, I, uh, I can tell you that I am not sick of that. I'm just kidding. I really, really. <laughs> Here we go is our intro for our first round. We're gonna have a short smoke for the uh, for the ramp room, and it was initially a rush, but since they got counter smoked, it will have a delay and it will turn into a lobby hold here. No pushes for the CT. A fairly standard. Oh no, num now becoming unstandard. Look, the double ramp room that's become custom customary meta these days has been abandoned. Hadrick is playing ramp solo, and he will, it looks like, be the receiving end of the the terrorist. Brute force blunt attack. He just got a headshot through smoke. UKR eats 
a uh, eats a USP shot right through the smoke without ever seeing an opponent. That's a lucky kill and that's a useful one to have, especially when Hadrick had to deal with all those opponents. We have a flanker coming through the hut, and he will engage in short moments with Arcane. He's gotten the best of him, dropping down to 31 health. Now, Clay, we've talked about this before. This is your second lobby, right? You're just you're just buying time here. Yeah, exactly. Smart play about the CTs to just give up ramp room because as a terrorist, you don't really gain too much. Uh, I mean, you could just drop down to see the B bomb site and defend that easily, and then have your outer guy watch uh, and the inner guy as well. But here is some kills happening here, so right. take it away. We got a huge headshot early on for the entry kill, and a, an exchange between Dew and Bruno the Beast ends up in Dew's favor. Bruno will drop, and I think his death will make Dew look away, but as he steps back into the corner, never mind. PCK cleans up. Dew takes that headshot. It's down to a three-on-one. No bomb plant ever, and that one really confuses me. They had ample time before the rotates really came through, but I think they got a little bit tentative there, and they lost out on a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, guys, if, uh, I think if you spam too many uh, symbols, you will get uh, temporarily timed out by the bot. So I want to be careful on your uh, raise your AEQs. But yeah, uh, you know, that, that round was very nicely done by Arda Gaming. You know, that first kill by Hadrock, like you said, he got it through the smoke. But uh, not too, not really, I want to say the luckiest kill because, you know, he saw the, the smoke get thrown. So he decided to take a couple shots. Of course, it was lucky that it hit the head, you know, and got that one. Really good, but, uh, really good discipline to keep your crosshair at the proper level. Here comes Ace. A sprint through to the hut, and it's the ninja drop into the vent. They lost one. Arcane came out through the hut as the sacrificial lamb, but everyone else made it to lower. Now, see if they get the suicide bomb plant. They may just. AEQ trying to. Oh, 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 oh. AEQ sad. He almost had it. He was probably down to the last uh, millisecond of the plant there. Do you like that uh, the throwaway bomb plant? Uh, it's not bad if, if you get it to work, but, uh, when you do that and it does, you don't come up with anything, not even kills, you know, force any rebuys, then it's kind of a waste, but I mean, it's definitely not, not the worst thing you can do. It's, it's a bit of a, of a pug strat, right? Maybe if yeah. you get a bunch of uncoordinated players who are not talking, but when you're facing playoff level main caliber teams, it's going to be very difficult to pull that off. Here's something that I do like, Clay. In the second round, the CTs, Arta Gaming went right for the rifle tier with the exception of Bruno, and they just said, you know what, it's a long range map, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say screw it let's go long range uh yeah uh, which i'm surprised actually you could have probably seen a surprise buy from the t t terrace but no that's not it and i think that uh arctic gaming felt that they were going to be safe here and decided they didn't have to upgrade and try to try to prepare for that surprise buy because no bomb plant on either of the rounds i think they were feeling pretty good about it yeah i also by the way like the p250 meta that's been added by csgo here it does add a good deal of depth and in, in terms of what you can do and the flexibility you have on pistol ecos oh nice Upward facing UKR kill into the rafters. PCK drops his weapon and delivers one to the T side. Now we've got a full on bison spray that failed for Bruno, delivering another weapon. It could be an eco round victory if Hadrick doesn't convert this into a win. He's got one behind the silo. He's bringing down ADQ and now it's a one on one. Hadrick will face him and he misses his golden opportunity. It's a one on one, similar health. And here's the, well, the verdict is Hadrick gets dropped. I thought for a moment that Hadrick had him. That's a great eco round, Clay. It is a great eco round, and you see the strength of the uh, P250 save right there. You know, get P250 in armor, and uh, you have enough money to buy usually after that. And P250s are just so strong right now. It's like, the headshots come <laughs> they come pretty qu uh, easily with those things, and they also have great aim. So, I mean, it's a good strat. They picked up kills, got the guns they needed to keep pushing into the site, get the bomb down, and cleaned it up. So, good job by IP right there. I think for a moment when Bruno the Beast was fielding a uh, a Bison, I thought he was saving for an eventual op, but he goes to the M4 instead. No ops on the field, none at all. Arctic will be going all rifles. It's a two-man crossfire look. Bruno was assisting uh, his teammate who was up in the outer rafters to get a crossfire, but he gets picked by Arcane. Now, we know Infinity Project has an op. We had probably thought, and I think Infinity Project thought, that they'd be facing an op as well. This Is this a disadvantage, Clay? Is an op necessary? Uh, no, not 100%. You know, we've seen other teams, uh, top-level teams, not use ops as much as uh, we normally used to see them. But uh, definitely not. There's cer certain areas you can play out here where you can play up close where an op isn't necessary. But, I mean, if you have that op, it definitely works. Nice Quick exchange. There. PCK brings down AEQ. And you know what? I'm getting a little bit trigger-happy with my mute button. Yeah, I stop just... muting your mic. <laughs> All right, fine. I, I just don't want to, like, mouth-breathe and make, it, make myself sound really unattractive, you know? It's okay, I, I like it. <laughs> Arcane will lose his life to Casablanca. He's down to a two-on-one do with 34 HP, is sitting right below the stairs, and Casablanca will be there to decapitate him, as the only thing he could see was the top of his head. Smart to pick up that op, by the way.
Yes, I absolutely want to pick up those ops because that's a lot of money invested right there. And they're going to be, be able to pass that off to Hadrock, who, you know, we have seen Oppa multiple times uh, in other games that Arctic Gaming has been in. So I'm going to be interested to see if he uh, plays ramp with that or if he decides to go out or because he's been playing ramp the past few rounds. It's on a map like this that happens to be CT side of this. Oh, they actually train. passed it over to Bruno. Yes, and I, I, we've seen him off before, which yeah. drew my comment earlier about why he didn't buy one after his buys. And Toro tries to get the one-shot PT50 kill on PCK, but PCK too fast with, with his three bursts and brings him down. So I, I, too often on maps that are one-sided play, we start talking about quotas to fill, right? How do you feel happy about this 9, 6, 10, 5, or whatever? It's, it falls upon the in-game leader to set better expectations for their teammates to not play that way, to play round to round. And I feel that sometimes throwing away rounds and trying to manage the game will sometimes make you play worse. Is that is that ever the case? Um, yeah, it, it can. Uh, but I mean, I think uh, IP, you know, they only had that one real throwaway round on the second round where they tried to just get that rush bomb plant. Uh, but it seems like they've been actually trying to take it slow and actually you know, get stuff going here to get kills and uh, uh, try to pick up guns on these save rounds. So I think they're, they're doing a pretty good job of getting their heads in the game. Oh, AEQ turns on PCK, who just made the tiniest noise coming from a radio. Four bursts him. He loses his life. It's a one on three. AEQ has three enemies with full health. It's unlikely that he's going to win this, but remember, it was an eco, so anything right now is a gift. This could be destruction. Yep, <laughs> public enemy was totally prepared and blew away AEQ as he tried to creep back into the radio. 4-1, Arctic leads by three. But yeah, like you said, talking about, uh, you know, expectations to have in terms of rounds you know the terrorists you want to have i'd say minimum absolute minimum three rounds and you know your biggest hope of getting that is getting that early pistol round which they didn't get but they were able to save a nuka round so that's good for them uh that got them out of the gate just a little bit they just i would say if you want to feel comfortable on nuke you want to get at least five yeah, and you also don't want to get demoralized not winning the pistol round. Too many people get caught up with the, oh, we needed those automatic three. Well, you don't. You just need to play a little bit better. Hadrick eats a nade and takes exactly one damage. Thank God for body armor, because it would have been a little bit worse. And that Asimov skin clay, I want it bad. <laughs> it is very, very nice. Uh, anyway, everybody alive for the T-sides. It's an all-rifle look for Infinity Project. It's a single-op look for Arctic, which is the exact mirror of what we had to begin the game with, probably because of the economy. Seeing some smokes here in outer, so they're gonna, I mean, not outer, ramp room. They're gonna go for it, and Hadrick smartly retreats down to the uh, bomb site. As we Do me a quick before. favor, Clay. Hit Q and look at total damage dealt. Public Enemy has spiked up, absolutely maiming the other team, doing so much damage and contributing well, and it doesn't really surprise me. He's at a 5 1 tear right now, but he's really pulling away, contributing more than his weight. Arcane sprays the control room, sees one in there, only really whiffs, kind of, and uh, it does a little bit of damage, but he finds. Hadrick behind the silo, brings him down, and enters the site successfully. Arcane proving his worth as an entry fragger, taking down two public enemies, struggling a little bit there uh, to bring down the man who is planting the bomb. Two versus three, totally winnable situation, unless Casablanca doesn't check his corner there. Bruno's the last one with his op, can't convert a quick scope. Three people alive, and they've recovered the op. Four to two feels pretty good, especially when you have an op out of it. Yeah, that was a very, very good round by Infinity Project. They played it really well, and you know, Hadrock gave up the ramp room, which uh, we talked about is pretty standard nowadays, and he went back to behind the silo. And then as the terrorists were coming down the ramp room, they were shooting at one of the uh, CTs in the computer room, and that information, it, it seemed like it didn't get relayed to Hadrock because Hadrock was still just kind of sitting there. And yeah, as, you I know, agree. And saw that cheap kill come around the corner, and they picked him up really easy. Arcane uh, does get the nod for making a huge contribution there. He he annihilated the, uh, his job or his enemies uh, as his job as entry fragger. Um, and he, he really made that a really simple take for them. No complications, no hunting for people to waste your time. So it could have been him that we call the... Oh, wow, wow. Hadrick has no regard for the range on weapons. He just went for the USP long range kill and he got it against a rifler. We have people coming down to lower now. Oh, knife kill, Toro just... <laughs> Absolutely shanks public enemy and steals his weapon. It's the three on two. The CTs fighting a very guerrilla battle right now, and they've kind of just scrapped it together and turned this into a respectable round. Now, see if they can actually win this one. Hadrick has the opportunity to pick up a gun, but it seems to be out of his reach. He'll need a headshot here to win it, and he doesn't. So Casablanca's with his op may be trying to save for the duration of this round. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> I think he's going to try to get some kills here, but if I was him, I'd probably go for the save. 
I'm zero sum game. Why not? Oh, oh my, my god. god! Toro annihilated in a plume of blood. It's a one on two, and now it's totally doable. He has the great equalizer, the AWP. He's got one below him, one behind him. Oh! oh AEQ avenges his teammate, but uh, highlight of the round. If we could just bring in the slow mo replay, God, I wish we had it. That was one awesome. Day. That was that was one hell of a shot. It... <laughs> Oh, when you see the shots with the ops, it gives me such a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. Uh, well, you know what? I they they lose that round, and it's four to three. And in terms of the spread on the map, you're not feeling great as a counter terrorist. But that eco was fantastic. It was, and I mean, if uh, Infinity Project could just pick up this round, that's going to give them a lot of control here. If they get this, that's going to force the CTs into another save round, which they then should be able to pick up that round, and that should give them the five that they need. Early entry, Arcane as a long-range entry fragger. Bruno de Beast, by the way, who's the CT side opper, losing that battle to Arcane, gives up control of Outer Clay. We talked about how important Outer is, how many avenues it gives, uh, what kind of lanes it opens up on the map. It really envelops a full, nearly a full 360 on the map. Here's a single trade. Casablanca brings down AEQ and loses his life. On the other side of the map, PCK brings down Toro. It's a 3-3. Three three. These, these two teams are just mirrors of each other. We'll talk about that at the beginning of the next round here. Move on, and eventually, hopefully, have a bomb plant here. Oh, PCK just got discovered in the vent, and UKR could not control his two burst. If he had just pulled down and landed a couple of extra shots, he would have had a free kill. Arcane is right behind PCK. Who has the drop? Nobody connects on that shot. Arcane's the last one, and PCK only needs to come out pre-firing, which he does. Cleans that up, five to three. Yeah, they, they, uh, you know, IP did a good job working, uh, getting the ramp room and then also claiming outer. You know, that nice pick by Arcane really got him presence outer and it got him down to secret after they threw the one two smokes, uh, you know, blocking out the lane uh, wait, wait, for the rest so of the For outer. clarification, for those people who don't uh, speak Counter Strike nerdism, <laughs> what are the one two smokes? Um, it is the smoke connecting uh, mini to warehouse, basically outside warehouse, and it makes a nice little smoke wall so the guy, if anyone's playing CT spawn, they won't be able to see you as you run to outer. Right. Um, that's exactly but yeah, right. so they got down there and they cleared out two people and that left uh, all three CTs basically rotated down lower. And it was kind of obvious. And I thought, you know, if IP just decided to go rotate and go back up inner, I think they would have had a much better shot at taking that round. I think so. I think they kind of shot their, themselves in the foot there. And, and for players as experienced as this, they kind of know it. But it does build into another round and they do survive and their economy is cheaper. So they've got some leeway to work with. Take a look at our cash situation, Clay. Not a whole lot of leeway to work with beyond this round, though. We've got a one man in the secret. He'll engage Dew, who actually is engaged from above him at the outer rafters. Bruno the Beast, who is traditionally the opera, plays from up there, ambushes Dew. Gets the first kill of the round and retreats. Arcane has one on his left. UKR has one on his left. That's Casablanca who got the drop and the dink on UKR. And oops, I believe if uh, if Hadrick doesn't retreat, there you go. He'll get the kill there and another trade. God, these teams are literally the exact same. They will not kill without having a response trade out. And that's the sign of a good match building up here. Three left for both teams. PCK, Hadrick, and Public Enemy. Arcane, AEQ, and Toro. And now we're in another situation where the CTs have rotated down lower, and if they just rotate up, or which it looks like they're actually going to do, uh, they'll probably have more success at getting the bomb down here. Right. Oftentimes, the objective as the terrorist on this map is to is to move around to to use mind games against the counter terrorist for positions. Here's another trade. Like we said, it's a mirror matchup. When you start moving those counter terrorists out of position, Clay, they start rotating back and forth. Those little hiccups in communication can be all the difference in winning and losing a round. Here comes a spray. PCK regrets that. Aims at head level, but AEQ crouched the shot. It's still a two-on-two. -two. It's a weakened CT side trying to retake. They've got to make a huge play here. Hadrick makes the mistake of crouching up the ladder and losing his life in the process. Here comes a one-on-two clutch that PCK will no longer attempt. He wants his A4 for the next round. He'll give it up and let this round go to the terrorist side yep and that was i mean honestly oh, i felt like that could have probably swung more in arctic's favor if uh casablanca has just hit his shots there in that right here because the two terrorists who were coming through there uh scouting had no clue he was there and he had the total drop on him like you said but then uh, i think was it ukr or arcane just turned and was able to get him even though he got the total jump on him and kind of ruined his plan Personally, I feel PCK stood in the mini, and everybody knew where he was. If he kept shooting to get the attention of the uh, of the terrorists, his his team in Hadrick could have crept up that ladder safely, and he wouldn't have lost his life like that. So maybe a, a, a bout of miscommunication there. Yeah. Great job by Infinity Project, who is probably uh, 
not necessarily favored to win this game. Pulling close and keeping a close scoreline here. Here come the full on rush. PCK sees the suicide rush through the door. And for an eco round, you've got all your money's worth. That single M4 that the CTs had went to great, great usage. That was absolute an annihilation coming up out of that hut. Toro's the last one facing off against Hadrick again, and Casablancas, who don't have weapons. But if they chose to try to recover some, which they may if they got a little bit uh, ballsy and tried to run into the hut, uh, then they'll have a chance to win this one. Clay, how many times have we seen eco rounds work this game? Uh, it's been going pretty well, but, I mean, yeah, that was a little strange one because we did see PCK actually buy an M4 for himself, and, I mean, it worked out perfectly. He picked up three for himself, uh, which gave his team a good chance to pick this up here. All right, our, tor our Toro clutch man is now stuck. Oh, how anticlimactic. No, that's not a conventional hiding spot. I understand the mind games of wanting to pick a spot that people don't look, but uh, he... He got the short end of the stick there. Hadrick went from the far side ramp room to look down into the site and found him just kind of standing out there in the open. Sad face, play. Sad face. Yeah. Sorry, I had to turn up the game volume a little bit as people were requesting, so uh, hopefully that's better for you guys. It's all my fault for getting a new mic. It is. You, you ruined the whole setup we had. If it's broke, don't fix it, you know? Not you know, we had a bomb plant. I'm surprised that we're not seeing a buy here. The terrorist economy would allow for it, but we see some 25s, some 23s, some 28s. It would be a very, very strained buy, so they'll go for an eco round here. Both teams have eco now, and that'll tell you how close the game is. Back and forth on pistol saving rounds is, uh, is something that uh, tells you that the money situation is nearly identical. It's very, very neck and neck, but... If you, if you took this in the broader context, Clay, I feel that the terrorists have to be feeling pretty good about what they're doing. Yeah, I think they are. You know, four rounds uh, with four more to go in the half, I think they could probably squeak out another one. But I'm, I wouldn't be feeling too bad about four, especially after failing the, uh, the T-pistol round. You have a full-on lobby hold here. Pull up your overhead since there's no action. Every person is committed to holding the lobby, not a single man looking for a flanker here. And that's told us that Arctic is not really pushing this game. Non-aggressive play and not varying your style of play may end up giving you uh, giving you some fits when you face off against teams that are w looking to exploit you here. Here's a quick scope from Bruno bringing down Toro. He's down to a four on three. They have a weapon recovered, however. They'll go to lower, but Hadrick is waiting, waiting for somebody to show their... Oh, Hadrick misses the opportunity to get the one-tap headshot. He'll regret it, possibly, but uh, it is an eco, so maybe they get an easy kill there. Oh, Bruno, he's having a bit of an off game, play. <laughs> yeah, they are all uh, seem to be missing a few easy ones here and there, where IP seems to be hitting some pretty hard uh, entries, and I think that's what's uh, getting him back in this game here. All right, well, we've got 30 seconds left in the round. The T's finally have to commit. I think they have kind of saw what was going on. They kind of knew that we only have a certain amount of time, so they forced themselves to go to lower. Hadrick will hold on, waiting for his teammates. Here comes the spray. Hadrick hangs on, has two kills to his name, has one more in his face, eight EQs on top of the ramp, and Hadrick doesn't want to surrender any of these kills to his teammate. He picks up a triple on the round, and all of it from behind the silo. Yeah. That didn't look like too bad of an eco round, but in reality, they only actually killed one person and forced one rebuy. So, I mean, not too great uh, in general. So, either way, they're going to be able to buy this round, and uh, they should be able to get something going because, like we've seen in the past few rounds, you know, their entries are on point so far, and if they can keep that momentum going, they should be able to pick up, I think, one to two more rounds. And the contributions, really, for uh, Infinity Project are, are universal. Everybody's really contributing at, a, at an equal level with uh, in terms of points scored. Uh, some early entries for Arcane were, were pretty much round changing, but everyone playing pretty well for the terrorist side. You can tell that they've been practicing. Here comes the first round, or the first bout of the round. PCK gets the better of UKR with the headshot and retreats from secret back to somewhere in lower. Arcane has somebody in the garage, but he can't know because of the smoke. And we have pushers, Glaive. You know, the moment I say it is the moment that they finally do it. Nobody pushes until this round, and now they're pushing through radio. <laughs> yeah, they are. Oh. I don't think they're going to see anybody there, so they're going to be able to tell them that uh, most of the terrorists should be outer right now. An opera in the garage, zeroed in. Do oh, oh, Bruno goodness. finally lands the quick scope, the one that we know him so well for. Absolutely clutch shot there when he got sprayed. You have to account for the aim punch there. Well, the aim punch is kind of gone slash not gone, but it did surprise him. He got the quick scope. One left. That's Arcane. He's right outside. He's flashing Bruno, and I think. He flicked he the shot. That, I think he used yep. that pipe to block the shot for him. 
Oh, wow, clever move there. If he if he definitely hid behind that pipe, it would have not affected him, and he would have just taken a partial blind. Crouched, finish off the round. That's high-level play. It is high-level play. Very good by him. And we are on another eco round, and it looks like we're not going to be seeing P250s. Well, two of them being bought, but uh, only two. So we'll see what uh, IP is going to go for on this one. Haven't seen him do a throwaway eco round yet. I hope they don't go for that right now. Mike might be muted. The rush is coming in at inner, and they are going to try to sneak down to lower. There's it a little was. bit of pickup there, uh, but PCK was able to pick up two, and you can continue on, sir. We had we had one throwaway you go round. It was the it was the same thing. Smoke and drop down the vent. Yeah, that earlier was on in the round game. I, I, I meant to say if I didn't, we haven't seen one since then. But ah, uh, I see. Nine to four, Arctic after a bit of a slow start, exchanging a couple of heavy punches back and forth with Infinity Project, is now pulling away and showing a, a half that's more, uh, I guess, reflective of an even scoreline. And I think that on the other half here, it's gonna it's gonna fall on Infinity Project to put together a really good half. It's it's gonna be really hard hitting people with uh, with a hundred plus ping play, especially when you have to hit those very small frame off shots. Yeah, it, it, def it definitely is a lot harder to hit people with high ping, uh, especially with the op, so. Okay, we've got a hold in ramp room. We've noticed something about Infinity Project. They're not one to really commit to full-on speed rushes. They're, they're not particularly well-versed at it, too. You can tell they don't practice it very much. They run out into upper, they seem a bit disjointed, and they don't really cover all the angle that you would expect. Oh, PCK removes Arcane from the field, shooting right over the right side of, uh, of T-Red there. So they're better at set pieces, at coordinated takes, more than, than five-man bull rushes. And, uh, and it seems like they're sticking with their strength with this slow play here. UKR is uh, is on a tear, has a double to his name. Hadjik trades out AEQ. UKR is the last one alive. We'll go to him. Our number seven is in the lobby trying to recover the bomb. He's got Hadrick right in front of him and holding that corner. Forces him out with that shot. He's going to get flanked very soon. And he escapes it just barely. Good timing. Throws a flash behind him so it doesn't blind him. Picks up the bomb. Turn around, friend. There he is. There is the executioner. We knew PCK was a slow creeper, and like we called it, he ends the round. Yep, but the terrorists are going to have enough money to buy here on this last and final round, so that is uh, good for them because I thought they were actually going to be short. Um, but yeah, so they're going to be buying, and I feel like the most of their success has been coming when they've been pressuring Outer for the most part. They have good smoke placements, so they have good smoke placement in Outer, and they also utilize the big rock boost very well, so I'm surprised they haven't been going to that a little bit more. Yeah, they did have a market amount. Of, oh, it's a full-on rush here. Public Enemy threw a smoke, not prepared for that. Had four people in his face. Thus far, only killed for the terrorists. And this could be a good signature round win if they could seal this half out with a final victory because 10-4 begs for a fifth round if you want to have a fair shot on the second half. That's the end of the half. You've been watching SIBO TV. Clay, I think you want to tell the viewers that we've got some free things for them today. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing a giveaway after this match. Uh, I believe we got some mouse pads to give away, so stay tuned for that. And then, of course, after that will be the uh, Complexity I Buy Power match that everyone in chat has been asking, hey, when's the Complexity versus I Buy Power match? <laughs> I think the people who joined the stream early are probably sick of hearing that question. <laughs> it's coming up after this one, we promise. But yeah, that was that was a good round. Uh, you know, we were talking about how how speed aggression isn't working out too well for IP, but then they decided to go for it and it worked out well. I thought there might have been a little bit of mistake there by uh, not smoking out earlier, but uh, they sealed it up. That Arctic wants to respond with their own kind of speed. They rush out looking to take over inner or upper, depending on what you'd like to call it. And they do something interesting. Instead of staying in the site, they plant the bomb and run back into the lobby to find the rotator. They absolutely caught the man rotating from the ramp room unprepared blew him away and that made that round look like clockwork yeah it is smart because i mean there's only so many places to hide in the inner so i mean pretty smart to send two people to go out and you know catch the rotators like that all right well we have double smg three rifle tier on the micro buy side of the micro uh, the rifle tier do you like this um yeah i mean you know you have three uh rifles and that works out. So, I mean, SMG is here on Nuke. Uh, engagement points aren't really too long, except for Outer. And if they focus, you know, ramp and enter, it should be fine. And UKR presses through, and as they expect, at this level of play, you're going to have somebody trying to make the suicide play on the eco round, trying to make something happen, trying to make the big shot. 
And uh, UKR was the one that got caught peeking that time. He loses his life. Four left for the CTs and everyone alive for Team Arctic. We're going to look for that bomb planter. He'll be downstairs. And oh, Hadrick with a nice three burst that really connected on the first shot. So me even faster than that. Dude's on top of the big box or the, uh, the box with the gap, if you're familiar with 1.6. Two left, Arcane and Toro. They're stalking around the map, knowing that this might not be our round. Clay, I, I don't, I, I can't really condone a successful eco round if you just get it over with. You do need to force some rebuys. Absolutely, especially when uh, they pick up some Galils, you know, and spend that extra bit of cash on the second round. It's really important to uh, force those rebuys, which they're going to force one, but that's going to be about it. So, you know, tough situation here for Infinity Project. They really need to get that pistol around, which they couldn't do. Uh, I mean, they kind of got to pull something off here on the eco round or, you know, just completely shut it down once the gun rounds kick in. Let's, do you recall who feels most comfortable for Infinity Project with an op? Uh, I think it's Arcane. It might be Arcane. I saw a couple of good shots by him. What I wanted to say, Clay, is that it's important on DE Nuke for, uh, for a map like this that's centric on somebody making a big entry frag or a big defensive stand to really m suppress the money here. It's another eco round, so maybe I'll just keep on with this topic. Wow. Okay, maybe I'll just say it really quickly. You've got to regulate the amount of cash that the opera is intaking. So you want to isolate him, kill him, and make it so he has to go into a poor buying cycle that he can't afford his luxury weapon every round. Yeah, and we see that none of the CTs were able to really afford. Well, they could have bought an op and some armor, but they wouldn't have been able to have any utility nades with them or a kit. So I think they all decided to just you know go with the rifles. And I'm sure we'll probably maybe see some up close play here in outer by the number six man. That's some. That's some. Re that's your reward, really. That's on the terror side. You get two clean scorecards, no deaths in your eco rounds. That's how you get rewarded. No ops for the CT side because you took no deaths and your wallets look pretty good. Do is stalking Casablanca because he knows one's below him. Two trades thus far for the T side. Only one exchange on the CE CT side. That's AEQ. You got Arcane in the secret staircase. Such a hard place to fight. Only having that headshot. Uh, available to you for the kill and that's something that people practice to death on dm servers clay it looks like pck has got that practice down yeah yeah i was gonna say it's the same for the guy who's uh, sitting on the stairs you know it's headshots for both uh both sides right there so basically whoever hits it first but uh yeah it's it's a risky spot but it can uh it can't pay off in spades now, this score is not indicative as to how close this game is every round coming down to the last one player the last two players Three left for the CTs, two left for the CTs, and like we said, even the healths are uh, are somewhat similar. Low health for Dew and Hadrick, high health for PCK and Toro. Now we have people jockeying for position around the map, trying to figure out where anyone is. Dew has called out his opponent's position, and Toro knew that he was climbing up that ladder because Dew knew exactly where he was. Good communication there. We can see it through the x-ray that they really knew what was going on. Hadrick is coming to assist his teammate, ambushes Toro, cleans up the site, and loses so much health by falling down, but it's okay. Dew has not too much health. All you need to do is give him a uh, pretty violent oh. gust, and I think he'd tip over. He misses that shot, and that was the chance to turn it into a one-on-one -on -one clay. That could be the difference in the round. Dew, our clutch man, number nine, is standing above the ladder thinking, I don't even know if I can get down safely. He'll have a chance. He thought somebody was flanking him. He jumps onto the silo. He knows at least one person's in the hut. He's going to go for this committed defuse, and nobody's really... Oh, never mind. He comes out of that silo, and I think like, he, had, he had a very small chance to pull that off. Yeah, but he did have that nade thrown at him, and I think he wanted to make sure he didn't die from it because he was only at, like, 10 health, and it probably it had a good chance to kill him. I don't, honestly don't know why it didn't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a little bit of luck right there. And, oh, man, that that when he came up the ladder... I know he got excited when he saw uh, that t terrorist in there because he had like a free shot on him, but he didn't settle his feet down and he actually fell right back down the ladder. If he would have just settled his feet, that probably would have been a guaranteed kill and would have changed the whole dynamics of the round. Highly underrated the amount of focus you need to settle your feet before your shot. Oh, Arcane! <laughs> Public enemy does a full backflip from the impact of the scout shot to the face. AEQ takes down another. That's Hadrick in the ramp room and Casablanca's tries to trade back. This route is not going for Arctic, and I think that even though it's a micro buy round, clearly a micro buy round, a desperation buy of sorts, I think Infinity Project just put their foot down. Yeah, they definitely did. Only three members of the terrorist team are left alive. Cosmoc has 17 health, so he's kind of useless at the moment, unless he just lands nothing but headshots, obviously. Uh, but Bruno kind of equalized it there a little bit, but takes a ton of damage, so yeah, and 
Did Peace Kid just get another one too? Yeah, well, it's a three on three, so somebody did. We missed that as, uh, as we were cycling through the kills there. UKR bring down PCK. It's down to a three on two. Some weak terrorists trying to filter into the site. That squeaky door opens up, and Bruno miscommunicated with his teammate. Casablanca was retreating back into the lobby while his teammate came out of the squeaky. So that ultimately failed for that uh, one lapse in chat. I think I think that given a couple of little sways in gameplay play this could be literally all tied up but it's 14-6 arctic is now working for the tie point yeah and they didn't all have enough money despite getting that win you see two famuses being bought so uh, i mean they're gonna be uh, slightly behind here in terms of guns and it looks like a full rush going in here. entry is good one for one trade two for one and there's nope <laughs> Three for two. AEQ, the last one left alive for IP. He's coming in hot. One left alive. Public enemy. He, he does get the kill. And that's going to give another round to Infinity Project. And they really needed that one. Uh, that should put the... No, Terrace. Uh, they could go for a buy here. Money's a little bit uneven. I think they'll probably want to... either. You know, it looks like they're going to try to equalize and uh, get a few people with AKs going. I would have loved to have done that one, but unfortunately, one messenger service, no, 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 one oh. messenger service that I thought I had turned off minimized me, and I was like, well, I don't really know what's going on, so I'm going to let Clay do it, because gotcha. he's, uh, he's all good. Good thing I was paying attention, right? Well, hopefully you're paying attention all the time. <laughs> Five terrorists have only two guns among, amongst them. They have to work with their rifles, and they mistakenly put one of the rifles on top of the big rock. They'll lose that AK that PCK was wielding. To, uh, to the CT who was in the garage. I believe that was Arcane. Well, they should be able to get it back, but that's going to definitely take some time out of whatever they're trying to do. Yeah, uh, they're actually committing to go get it. I think they just recovered it. Yep, they have. They realized that was a valuable commodity, so they went up to go get it. They've milked maybe 25 seconds off the clock, but, you know, maybe it's worth it to have it for this particular round. Now Safari Mesh AK must be really used because you can't even tell Safari. Another nice shot by Arcane. He is on fire with those uh, headshots right now. He is. Here's another entry attempt to AEQ. Will trade. Hadrick has one that's due. And oh, what? That was a nice double. UKR cleaned up two in a single burst. Spray transferred. And you know what, Clay? Here comes the here comes the comeback a little bit. Almost. They really just need to shut down this round, and then the ball will be rolling even further because, like I said, if they do shut this down, that's going to uh, force a save onto Arctic, and we do see... Oh, uh, okay, someone did buy for PCK. So Casablanca is going to be wielding a Galil uh, and do actually on a Fama, so both teams really even in the gun game. It is. Take a look at the cash situation, however. We have people emptying the bank accounts here. Due at zero. Just flat zero. Casablanca is also at zero. We can see something uh, that would turn into an eco round after this if uh, the either team loses. First exchange kills is an even exchange. PCK and AEQ both down. Arcane with a nice three burst will bring down public enemy. Three to four. It, I can't really tell if there was a set piece set up here. It looked like something intentional with an outer uh, take in mind, but... The people who are in lobby waiting for some success at outer will no longer have that component to their strat. Now they have to make it up. Yeah, exactly. And it looks like they're going to be trying to favor the ramp room here uh, as their alternative. There we go. We've got the next exchange. That's a ramp room hold failed by due. Lower is not open for business. We got two in the vents waiting for them. Bruno the Beast comes out pre-firing, knowing that they took a little bit too long, so they have to assume that they'll be ready to engage right away. And if that happens... They'll have to win that gunfight at a distance. They'll wait now, and they're starting to play mind games with Infinity Project. Clay, talk about how easy it is to uh, to really start messing with the counter-terrorist head if you get into the bomb site early and start making them think too much. Yeah, it is a really easy, nice touchdown aid right there. But yeah, you know, once you get ramp room, you can pretty much start screwing with their heads because, like I uh, noted earlier, you know, that's going to force CTs to probably try to rotate down to lower. And uh, if they do that, you could either, you know, decide to commit there or rotate back around towards upper. All right, Toro comes up spraying at the control room. He's brought it to a one on two. He's got one at the double doors and one inside a toxic. The bomb is ticking. This is the unfavorable matchmaking spot that everyone's been in before. There's no way to win that, but I'm going to charge that bomb anyway. Casablanca's too fast for that. Came out and literally strafing four bursts at him. That was a... 
you know, when you come strafing out holding that D key clay and you tap that A masterfully stopping on a dime and just spraying a perfect drag down, that's one of the best feelings in the world. It is, it is. And you're looking at this, uh, we see only three members, uh, four members of the counter terrorist team were able to get guns here. They had to actually do like a, a weird buy where someone who, had, I think it was Arcane who had a lot of money for their team, bought up everybody because, uh, yeah, everyone pretty much was spending everything they had on nades and whatnot to try and defend these last few rounds. It is. It is absolutely the last round. If Arctic can wrap this one up, it would be end. It would end up 16-8. But uh, I think Infinity Project has fully bought out, intending to win out from here. They have, they have the opportunity to do it. Smokes out and a flash out into the ramp. Just a flash. Hadrick hits the crouching entry shot, and IP responds with two. Not really what I predicted. Hadrick hit a beautiful shot. It, it looked like he was stopped admiring his own work. <laughs> <laughs> Probably sent him so I can't Did believe I, I that? did that. <laughs> PCK will engage the Hellman, the man of the lockers, at a distance. Bruno the Beast evens it all up. It's a three on three. This could be the very end here. Arcane waits for the jumper. He misses his opportunity. Does some damage to a falling terrorist as they move down to lower. UKR on the far rotate will bring down the bomb carrier. The bomb carrier was the trailing man. That could be a critical mistake for this particular round. Two men left. They're both holding the ramp. They have 45 seconds to work with, and they have a bomb out of reach. Three CTs alive. They'll just stall for time at this point. UKR actually chooses to say, to hell with stalling for time. I'm charging this bomb. Only one left for the T's. Maybe they'll have to wait for another round if they want to claim victory. PCK has an AK. He'll go to the toxic room, close the doors, and say, maybe another day. <laughs> Smart. I mean, uh, looking at the money on the terrorist, uh, they're not looking too hot. So uh, if they want to try to close this out quick, then they need to save and you know try to have as many guns as they can for next round. But I mean, good play by the counter terrorist. You know, they had to buy out. Uh, only one member didn't have a gun for himself, and that was uh, the guy who got dunked by Hadrick in, in the ramp room. So, but uh, good cleanup from everyone else, and you know they got that bomb carry on that rotate, and it was nice. They'll live to fight on for another day. We are still on the game point here, Clay. It's going to be an eco, however, and barring some sort of catastrophic failure for IP, this will be 15-10, though not necessarily doable yet. They're starting to feel a little bit momentum. Yep, and like I said, it's going to be a save for the terrorists, so this should give uh, Infinity Project some hope here. You know, they should be able to get this round, and then at that point, they only, they're only looking at five more to win CT side, which is definitely doable, so... Maybe we all like to root for the underdog here because I always like to see comebacks. Or maybe we just like to root for close games here. So I will openly say that Arctic's eco should fail them so we could have more Counter-Strike. But I know we want to get to the next match. I know everybody's kind of waiting for that. Here's the entry. PCK lands it. He of the only rifle of the round has done a great job there. Toro will surrender his weapon. Another available to the T's should they choose to charge, but they will not. They'll go right into the site. Come out straight firing at Dude. He surrenders his gun. UKR rotates down and gets a double though they had a clean entry. Two to two, both have weapons. Important to note, both have weapons. They have an even chance at winning this. Now it's up to playmakers. It's all about coordinating. It's all about making that play or being coincidentally lucky and knowing exactly where your opponent comes down the ladder. UKR, huge round with a ace. That's one of those sneaky aces, Clay. You don't even know because you're just talking. It happens over the course of an entire round. Yeah, very, very nice play by him. Terrace, are they going to go for the bot here, try to close it out? Looks like a double eco. Oh, the... they're just, I think they're pur purposely going against my prediction here. Well, I, I think, <laughs> I think your, <laughs> your bout of predictions had to end, that streak had to end at some point, but honestly, if you think about it, Clay, this is the right decision. Yeah. Here we go. Here comes the all-out ramp rush. AEQ having a hard time landing the rest of his shots, but Du will help back him up to make sure that his teammate doesn't die in vain. There's only one T left. He was waiting at the ramp room. Toro will clean him up. Excuse me, the the uh, ladder room. What am I saying? Ramp the room. squeaky door. The squeaky door. Okay. And uh, and he will lose his life. That eco gets cleaned up really, really nicely. 15-11. Comeback has been on for a while, but it's just hanging on by a thread. It is, and like you said, that was the smart play to go for the double eco, make sure they could buy out completely with everything they need to uh, for these last few rounds coming up here, and they do. They have all AKs, they have all the smokes they need, they should be able to get a round going in their favor. Yeah. 
moment of truth, really. Arctic needs to, to validate all these saves that they've been doing to really, really put this one away because they're letting their opponents get back into this one. And plucky as IP has been, you know, they haven't really played up to uh, up to their opponents yet. So now now is the time to definitively say that we deserve to win this game. And and we, though we've been criticized recently, have uh, have the upper hand here. But Arcane disagrees. Clearly he disagrees. PCK is down. The first kill of the round, the entry fragger who was probably working outside to find out whether or not they have purchase on that side of the map has lost his life. Arcane will step up into the secret looking for anybody else at the T-Red. We know that, that there's no one else out there, but there is someone to his right heading toward the hell position. Two easy kills. AEQ and do clean up. Hadrick will trade out. It's pretty much even. They have a one-man advantage. They're working through the hell position looking to go through heaven, it looks like, Lay. Yeah, it does, uh, which right now they look like to be stopped because they're not quite sure what they want to do. They might try to go out of here and then work around from uh, from the mini area because, I mean, if you have one person go in there, then you don't have that gives you a much better opportunity to get into the site. Uh, Arcane barely makes it out alive, and Public Enemy is kicking himself. That was the equalizer. That was what it took to make it all evened up, so he misses out on that opportunity. They got one inside the hut, by the way, and if they find him, he'll be able to at least even this up or just get completely ambushed. There's the trade. Toro will get that kill and I'm not viewing these things for some reason. Clay, do you get these? Uh, I just manually switch, but uh, yeah, I auto all right, that gets wrapped up. Arctic wins 16-11. They survive in the lower bracket. Infinity Project goes home. 